Hello everyone, welcome back again with us at Military TV. Today we're going to talk about how Turkey strives for an independent defense industry and its challenges. Building up Turkey's defense industry has long been a priority for the government of President Recep Tayyip Erdogan. And it has made considerable progress to date. Today, Turkey is ranked as the 14th largest global defense exporter with a defense industry that grew to $11 billion in 2020, according to the SIPRI, the Stockholm International Peace Research Institute. Despite its success, the industry is now facing growing pains and challenges like brain drain, a currency crisis, dependence on foreign suppliers, and regional political disputes that could hamper growth going forward. Let's first look at the historical development of Turkey's defense industry. The first initiative in establishing a defense industry in Turkey goes back to the period of the Ottoman Empire. The defense industry, which had a strong position up until the 17th century, stayed outside the technological developments in Europe since the 18th century, and has totally lost its impact starting from World War I. Thus, no significant defense industry infrastructure was present during the first years of the Republic, and activities in this domain were limited to the establishment of new facilities near Ankara during the Turkish War of Independence. Having the view that defense industry is a part of the overall industrialization and development, the Republican administration supported the state's guidance in industrialization and therefore the defense industry during the first planning period. Despite such activities as the in-country aircraft production, a strong infrastructure could not be established due to internal and external conditions. In the post-World War II period, activities in the defense industry initiated during the first years of the Republic were not sufficient due to a lack of state support, which came to a halt as a result of the foreign military aid received upon promotion of bilateral relations with the United States and Turkey's membership in NATO. However, regional problems Turkey faced in the 1960s, Cyprus crisis in 1963 and 1967, Turkish invasion of Cyprus in 1974, and the arms embargo following the invasion, necessitated the development of a defense industry based on national resources. After 1974, the Turkish Armed Forces Foundation was established with this understanding and some investments, though limited, were initiated. As the number of defense companies grew, the government established the Under Secretariat for Defense Industries SSM, in 1985 to reorganize the sector. The SSM's mission was to lay the groundwork for a modern defense industry and modernize the Turkish Armed Forces. Despite limited resources and other hurdles, the SSM has proven quite successful, enabling the industry to develop steadily over the past 34 years. The sector only really took off over the last decade or so, however, driven by aggressive government policies designed to ensure Turkey's self-reliance and boost its industrial exports. According to the Presidency of Defense Industries SSB, the turnover of the Turkish defense and aeronautics sector rose from $1.85 billion in 2006 to around $6 billion in 2016. In other words, sales tripled in just 10 years. Over the same period, the sector's exports rose from $487 million to $1.67 billion. However, for three consecutive years of that decade, 2014, 2015, and 2016, exports didn't break the $1.6 billion mark raising concerns about the long-term sustainability of the industry's rapid growth. To revitalize the sector and boost exports, the government adopted new regulatory measures, bringing several local defense industry bodies under the office of the president, including in 2017 the SSM and the Turkish Armed Forces Foundation, which is responsible for developing the national armaments industry and purchasing weapons, vehicles, and equipment. According to President Erdogan, the SSB was brought under his office to boost its potential and improve resource allocation and efficiency. 
The government has also repeatedly tasked the diplomatic corps with the mission of marketing Turkish military equipment abroad and finding new markets for its defense exports. The year 2018 brought several important developments on this front. According to a report from SIPRI, Turkey, which it categorizes as an emerging producer, successfully crossed the $2 billion export mark. In fact, defense and aerospace saw the strongest export growth among all Turkish industries that year. The industry maintained the trend into early 2019, with a 64.4% rise in exports in January compared to the same period last year. Despite the impressive progress made over the last decade, the sector still has a long way to go to reach its targets. According to Turkey's Procurement Authority, or SSB, the government aims to make the Turkish defense industry 100% independent by 2053, increase its export capacity to $50 billion, and have at least 10 Turkish defense companies among the 100 biggest companies in the world. Achieving these goals would require a huge effort. SIPRI warns that a policy of ambitious arms export growth is difficult to implement in the long term, particularly as recent history has shown that arms exports by smaller exporters can fluctuate significantly, citing examples like Sweden and Brazil. Furthermore, Turkey also needs to overcome a growing list of challenges, including brain drain, the need for new markets and massive investment, political factors, dependence on foreign components, and the depreciation of the local currency. The last two issues are closely related as many key components on which the industry relies are sourced from abroad and priced in foreign currency, increasing costs for local producers. Brain drain is believed to be acting as a break on development in some critical areas. The vast majority of people leaving are young, highly educated engineers, often with significant experience. According to an SSB survey, many of those who left the sector cited limited chance of promotion and professional progress as the primary reason, followed by low salaries. Securing much-needed investment is another big challenge. In normal cases, this could be accomplished by opening the sector up to foreign investors. But given the industry's connection with national security, this doesn't seem to be an option. Interested investors would likely include the US, European countries, Russia, and China, which would have the effect of limiting Turkey's defense independence. To overcome this, Turkey has established a partnership with Qatar, a small, rich country with which it has strong ties and which doesn't pose a threat to Ankara. This partnership is expected to help secure funding to develop Ankara's defense industry on the one hand, while also boosting Doha's defense capabilities on the other, thus deepening the alliance between the two countries. In addition, politics also may prove to be a major stumbling block for the sector. Many foreign customers do not distinguish between the government's position on foreign policy issues and the Turkish defense company's interest as private entities. As a result, Turkish firms are unable to expand into certain markets and are often sidelined at major regional defense forums. Following the onset of the Gulf crisis in 2017, Saudi Arabia and the UAE canceled several contracts with Turkish defense companies as a result of the government's support for Qatar. Turkey's participation in the F-35 program may be threatened by politics as well. As tensions between Ankara and Washington rise over Turkey's planned acquisition of the Russian S-400 missile defense system, it could impact Turkish defense firms, which are supplying $12 billion worth of parts for the F-35 program. Although the government has high hopes for the local defense industry and seems dedicated to realizing them, there are a number of obstacles that stand in its way. It is not clear yet how the government will address the mounting challenges, however priority should be given to stopping brain drain, securing needed investment, and neutralizing the political factor. Thanks for watching and see you in the next videos.